I'm going to have the children come forward. Do you guys remember, uh, oh, what was the name of that movie, Toy Story? Yeah. Do you remember the original one with, uh, who was the cowboy? Woody. Woody. What was written on the cowboy's boot? Andy. Why? That was the toy's owner. Look on the bottom of your foot. Go ahead. Imagine God has written on there God or Jesus. Why would I say that? Why would I say that? <laughs> what, what did you say? God created us. What else did he do for us? He died for our sins. Jesus died for our sin. He made us his own. We're his. So what now? We're his. What now? You guys want to, okay, what's he talking about? You guys always good? No. No. What's that mean? You're sinners. Can sinners be saved? Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because Jesus Jesus died for your sins. Because you know that. You know that and you trust in that. That's why you can kind of look at the bottom of your shoe. Or think of it on your forehead. Well, Roxy can't save you. But Jesus has. And we thank him for that. Amen. I got to get up. <laughs> that is why I sit on the steps. <laughs> it's easier to get up. Grace, peace, and mercy from God our Father in Christ Jesus our Lord and Saviors. The rock from which you were hewn. What do you think when you think of a bunch of rocks? I don't know if you guys can see these. We, uh, we found a rock way up in the UP of the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. <laughs> I mean, it was big. It was about, what, like this? I couldn't carry it. But a friend of ours, he carried it up. <laughs> It's a big, it's big rock. What do you think when you see a rock? Is there anything special about a rock? Sometimes. This one was a, what kind of rock was that? Agate. Big agate. What about diamonds? That's really a rock. And I know your lives always reflect a diamond. They always sparkle and shine, right? <laughs> Yesterday, one of, my, one of my boys was mowing the lawn, and he tapped our uh, upright on the, uh, the backflow preventer to the water. <laughs> Let's just say water was gushing out in our front lawn. I didn't feel real shiny. (laughs) He didn't feel real shiny. As I'm reaching down into the water to find the shutoff valve, and the cockroaches are swimming up at the top and all the little things that are in there. (laughs) Yeah, I don't like cockroaches. We got to shut it off, and we got it. We got it fixed partially. But sometimes our lives do not; they're not real shiny. Sometimes it's like we're feel like a bunch of pebbles, a bunch of rocks.
the rock from which you were hewn. The Old Testament in Isaiah. Listen to me, you who pursue righteousness, you who seek the Lord. Isaiah is talking to the people in Babylon. Not everybody was seeking the Lord. Not all Israel was seeking the Lord. Some had gone after other gods. That's why he's saying, you who pursue righteousness. Now, if you pursue righteousness, that's an act of righteousness, not a passive. And I know as Lutherans, we really don't talk about that very much. But I want to share another text with you. Praise be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And I ask you, what is new birth? Look behind the altar. What is that? Can you guys see that? Baptism. We don't do anything in baptism. Sometimes our parents have brought us as passive. We receive the passive righteousness, not active. Now, we have been raised in the faith. Listen to me, you who pursue righteousness. Now you can pursue righteousness. But when you're in the darkness, you can't. Look to Abraham. Why do we look to Abraham? Why would we want to look at Abraham? I mean, Abraham had sex with his slave girl. Because Sarah was like, hey, there's no way I can get pregnant. Let go, after, go for her. So he did. But he never forgot about the promise. And God reminded him of the promise. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah who bore you. For he was but one when he was called. And then he became a great nation out of that. Was Abraham perfect? No. <laughs> no. But God still worked. Are we perfect? Are you perfect? Do you feel shiny and bright and 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. When things go wrong. <laughs> um, when people might curse you or ignore you because of who you are as a Christian. We don't always feel bright and shiny. Sometimes we feel like a bunch of rocks. And sometimes we have rocks in our pockets. And even after this service, you might have rocks in your pockets. And what I mean is sin. We get this idea... That we're going to be sinless. Or we need to be sinless in order to go to heaven. Now, I'm not giving you carte blanche to go out and sin. But know where your righteousness comes from. From God. <laughs> Hang on to that faith. 
in him. Look back to Abraham and Sarah. Abraham, from the rock in which you were hewn. We all find our, if we went back in our, we could go back in our family tree, we would see it. For the Lord comforts Zion. He comforts all her waste places and makes her wilderness like Eden. You know what he's talking about, the wilderness in Israel? It's a bunch of rocks. <laughs> there's not a lot of green. There's not a lot of water. It's a desert in the wilderness. And sometimes our lives are like that. And through Jesus, through our faith in Jesus, that started in our baptism, you make that green. Look up your eyes to the heavens. What do we think when we hear that? Look up to the heavens. Who do we know is in heaven? By God our Father, with Jesus at the right hand of God. This text is for the Israelites in ba- that are in captivity in Babylon. And a lot of them have forgotten about God. And he is reminding them. And not, not only that, my righteousness draws near. His righteousness. Not ours. That passive righteousness that he gives us. So we can pursue righteousness. So we can pursue a holy life. So when you look at the bottom of your foot and you see a child of God, Jesus, who do you belong to? But him. Your passive righteousness that we receive from hearing the word, that we receive from hearing that God has forgiven you on account of Christ. Knowing that Jesus died on the cross, everything we we receive from him, when we receive his body and blood, when we have communion, you really aren't doing anything. You're receiving. He has made you righteous. He has made you right with God. Your faith in Christ has made you right with God. Abraham was accounted righteous because of his trust in the promise. Now you and I know that, yeah, he didn't, he wasn't perfect going through that. Well, what about us today? We're not. But be faithful. Come and hear his word often. Receive the gifts that he has for you. His body and blood combined with the word. Baptism combined with the word. Not our work, but his. You 
And we receive that gift of grace. That gift of grace that Paul talks about in Romans. Even in the gospel lesson, I think Peter Blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Flesh and blood cannot reveal Christ. Same with us. Does not reveal it. But coming through hearing his word, Built on the rock, the church shall stand. Yeah, there's, there's stuff going on in the world. But guess what? Christ will never be defeated. In the end, he will put his en- enemies under his footstool. Stay faithful. At least they're not trying to kill us here. Do you ever think about that? Can't say that for Pakistan. They're burning churches. Stay faithful. Remember Abraham. He kept the faith. Keep the faith in Jesus. Because he will never let you down. So when you feel like a bunch of rocks, remember from which you came. And then... Look up into the heavens. Look up to the mountain. Well, which is pretty hard in Florida. <laughs> so we look to the heavens. And the reason they say look to the, sometimes look to the mountains, there's a lot of mountains in Israel, and that's where they worshipped, was on the mount, on the mountain. But keep the faith in Jesus. Keep hearing his word. He has done everything for you, that you will have life, life forever and ever and ever with him. Amen.